As always, it's hard to believe that another year is at an end. My grandson, in an effort not to be left out of the holiday gift giving, gave me his cold just in time for Christmas. It wasn't COVID, thankfully, but the stuffiness lingers on, so my apologies if I sound congested. From an imaging standpoint, 2021 was astounding. I completed 33 images in 2021, 32 of which were deep sky images. That exceeds my previous three years of deep sky images combined. How? Certainly wasn't because the sky in Virginia suddenly became permanently clear. I actually only completed three images at home. However, most of that wasn't due to the weather. Weather wasn't great, but it wasn't that bad. Instead, I bought a used Takahashi TOA-130 refractor and also a new QHY-268M camera and filter wheel. It's taken most of the year to get it fully operational, thanks to lead times to get reducers and flatteners, a filter wheel problem, and a tilt issue. The real source of my productivity this year was being invited to participate in a team that had a telescope at Sierra Remote Observatories in California. The equipment is far beyond anything I ever expect to personally own, and it's been a joy to be a part of that team. If I've counted right, I produced 22 images there, and that's despite beginning in June. The number of clear nights there has been phenomenal, and although the late summer was marred by high-altitude smoke from the California fires, it was still a fantastic experience. I learned so much about image processing thanks to the quantity and quality of the data. And that's despite the system really not operating optimally yet. There's some maintenance we need to do on the system soon, and hopefully that'll improve things even more. I was also lucky enough to be asked to help a friend with a telescope in Texas. And several images came from that telescope, including my first mosaic. I've been lucky to be able to devote some time to some fairly deep images there. I'm looking forward to what that can produce in 2022. Overall, the year produced 17 broadband and 15 narrowband images. For Deep Sky, it covered just about everything except for supernova remnants. I was even honored to have one of my images selected as a top pick on Astrobin, first for me. Not every image was as good as I'd hoped, but even the worst of them was better than just about anything from two years ago. Overall, the quality level of my images took a big step forward this year. I do want to send out a big thanks to Eric Coles of the Astro Imaging Channel, who finally helped me understand tone mapping, and that had a major impact on my narrowband images. Not every image was perfect, but overall these are the best images I've ever done, and i got to admit I'm inordinately proud of them. There are too many to go through each in any detail, but if you see an image in the slideshow that you would like more detail on, let me know in the comments. If we have interest, I can do some videos on individual images. As I look back over the images, it's hard to pick a favorite. I'm not sure I'd give the same answer on any given day, but I can say that it's been an amazing year for imaging and for growth, and I really look forward to what 2022 holds. So let's leave 2021 with a little night music.